we used to know that modern humans left Africa about 60,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. And then there's new evidence that they actually were moving around uh, yeah. earlier. And so there are a lot of projects going around. Yeah, because they didn't know there was vibranium under the soil. <laughs> yeah. So. Hernandez is an environmental archaeologist. He teaches science, technology, and society and is the public information officer of AGHAM. A lot of us, when we saw Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones and Devil of Doom, we thought, we want to be archaeologists and yet, we don't know exactly what an archaeologist does. Um, I'm sure it doesn't involve, you know, flicking a whip all the time, I hope. But um, what exactly is archaeology? Well, simply put, archaeology is the study of culture change through its material remains. That's why it involves so much digging? Uh, well, yes, that's one. Um, you might look at digging as a euphemism for gathering data. Mm-hmm. In this case, because a lot of, because data is the past. Yes. Right? Most of it is underground. Mm-hmm. or in ruins, or in fact, just around us, except that we have to do detailed analysis of those materials to, or in order to get some kind of chronology. And only then, after creating that chronology, can you start to understand why and how culture changes. And so what sort of archaeological work is being done in the Philippines? Because um, a lot of, well, the general public is not aware until we read something in National Geographic that, whoa, they found something in the Philippines. We don't know just how much work is being done around the islands. Well, compared to our Southeast Asian neighbors, not much, mm-hmm. I would suppose. Why? Because in terms of a population of, of practicing archaeologists, we're, we're less than 50. If I remember the data right, in terms of professional archaeologists, and, um, and are they all affiliated with the University of the Philippines? Either the University of the Philippines or and or the National Museum of the Philippines. Okay. So those are the two main institutions where. And there's just fifty. So technically, if around that, um, if uh, you're in high school and you don't know what to do with your life, consider archaeology. I mean, it's a growing industry, right? Yes, there is potential. Yes. As regards industry, it is dependent on industry. It is dependent on, on, on how nation and our leaders value our, our history, our culture. It, it depends on how much they value it and we'll put their money where their mouths are. Yes, So, definitely. Which leads to the next question, how is archaeology funded in the Philippines? Let's talk first about the University of the Philippines, right? Yeah. So, I am an archaeologist. Um, not directly, um, not officially uh, associated at, at this moment with the Archaeological Studies program, although I do have projects with them. Yeah. I'm now with the College of Science, uh, Science and Society program. But um, faculty members or academic staff yes. are, are allowed or have a chance to apply for funding. Mm-hmm. Um, whether the funding available from the university is, is sufficient, that's, that's another question. There are opportunities from the university system to get bigger funding, mm-hmm. and these opportunities are usually funded by the OST. And okay, the, the Department of Science and Technology, yes. yes. It's where, yeah, it's, it's that like, I'll give you a grant to dig and then give me something in two months. It takes time mm-hmm. to produce actual archaeological knowledge. Yeah. And we have, we have small gains, definitely. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the small gains are spectacular uh, in terms of being newsworthy, but otherwise... Example of a small gain. 
you know that you get a, a rhino and mm-hmm. then you know that that rhino is dated to around 700,000 years old and that it has cut mm-hmm. right so in fact that landed that landed in in a, a major publication nature mm-hmm. and um, but does that does that tell you a whole lot about prehistoric culture back then definitely not it only told us that there was a rhino, there was a rhino with cuts with cuts yes. and most likely there were people but we haven't found those people mm-hmm. right? and uh, those gains right a lot of those gains um, the, the big ones the, the recent big ones were funded by by, by foreign collaboration mm-hmm. or were made possible because we had foreign collaboration okay um, and so that's the other that's another way that, that uh, we Filipino archaeologists are able to not necessarily get funding but but get our work out mm-hmm. and, and achieve more in terms of understanding culture change right as as far as if we, we're going to be um, technical about it what we're able to do is add to the writing of Philippine prehistory yes but we haven't move beyond just putting together the historical data because first we, when we put that after we put that together that's the time we start to look at the patterns understand why things have changed and, and that's really the archaeology well you know if we know very little about prehistory we already know very little about recent history that's so true. it's all you know it, it's all the trend yeah. can i offer you something to drink just water please Sorry. okay can just we can uh, we have a glass of water for our guest yes My okay gosh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. So the the archaeology thanks. the archaeology department of UP was in the global news recently for the discovery of Homo Luzonensis in yes, yeah. um, in, in northern Luzon, and so you know we, we all read about this like wow we're in nature wow we're in National Geographic, uh, but what does it mean for Filipinos that there was this fossil found and. It's so ancient. It's older than we thought. It should be a source of pride. You know how we're always like, I was just going over my social media and a very good friend of mine, um, um, a resilient scientist based in Barcelona. Too bad, you know, I mean, she has a project here in the Philippines, but why isn't she here? Because there's no funding. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But she just said, is there anything going right for the Philippines? Mm-hmm. You know, but when you get a when you get news like this out, you, we should be happy. That's it. Yes, generally. that that work is being done, and yeah. there are results. Yes, definitely. I mean, um, after that find got out, or you know, it's, we were keeping it. You know, we wanted to, we wanted to, to make it big news. You know, as, yes, uh, being part of the university community, and when it popped, right, everyone was sharing it. And that's, yes, that's great. Yeah, but, but you're talking about the academic community. What about, you know, your average man on the street hears that there was a fossil excavated? What, the, what is the significance in his life? Having more of us archaeologists and other science advocates saying, you know why this is important? Because even for the fact that, Oh, pare, we have a great culture here. Okay, that's it. And I'll take from one of the questions that you you, you uh, sent to me through email. Like, what, how do I react when people say the Philippines has no culture? Yes. Right. Well, uh, of course, when you, when you are a, a student of, or a scholar of culture, the first thing that you might say is that's totally not true. Mm-hmm. There is so much culture in the Philippines because we've been colonized, we've been you know, taken over by all these countries, and yeah. you know, we're so receptive, we're such a nice people. So there is so much. Co- we are culturally diverse. Mm-hmm. Well, to the man on the street, the significance is not so much that we have ancient cultures present here, but that we have an academic community that is doing something to establish our provenance, as it were, as a yeah. as a culture. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's uh, it's very masturbatory in in, in practice. With, For instance, yeah. um, archaeological teams have to deal with local governments and communities in the sites that they are working on. So, how does that work? As in, how do you go to a place and say, um, um, "Excuse me, we're going to dig up your field because we think there's something under here that would be of interest to scientists." I've generally found um, Filipinos to be very o- o- welcome. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
to to our gestures of wanting to dig their fields. Uh, sometimes you'll have to pay rent. But, but won't there be the assumption also that there's buried treasure there and they're trying to take it away from us? Definitely, uh, definitely. Like um, one of one of the longest running projects um, out of the University of the Philippines, uh, the Palawan Prehistory uh, Project or Paleohistory Project run by mm -hmm. Professor Dr. Victor Paz. We've been going back to Palawan for more than 15 years. Okay. Yeah. And um, even on the... Which in the general scheme of things, if you're looking at, you know, tens of thousands of years of history, 15 years is like a blip. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it, it, um, it took over a decade for people to accept us as not treasure hunters. Are people you know? used to the presence of treasure hunters? In, in particular areas, definitely. Um, Agusan, Surigao, uh, Batangas. Because um, the, the, the strange fact is a lot of what we have in terms of artifacts were found by treasure hunters digging around, uh, hoping to find the Yamashita treasure or whatever, and then they come across some ancient pots. Now, oh, it's pots. We don't like them. They're not gold. So they, they yeah, until sell they them found... to collectors, yes. Yeah, uh, yes. Until they found out that, oh, we can make money out of these spots. Mm -hmm. I would suppose that there would be very unique finds by these treasure hunters. That so we can agree that there are more treasure hunters than archaeological than archaeologists in the Philippines, right? And they're certainly better funded. Well, yeah, they yes. Yes, uh, because well, some of them have tractors, backhoes, whatever. Well. When you talk about better funded, yeah, better funded to to continuously dig. Yes, you know, but it's kind of their their life's work. Yes, yes. but in terms of um, you know generating data and information, yes. well, not not, uh, not of course. Not, yeah. They're not interested in the data. Yes. Yeah, because I mean, just the one radiocarbon date costs how many tens of thousand pesos, and to actually get a story, you need a couple of radiocarbon dates. So easily, if you request funding from the university you can easily go to like half a million just to date one site if you really want good yeah just to figure out how old something is yeah yes yeah. so yeah but so those those guys obviously don't need that they just need money to feed they just diggers. want something that they can sell yes yeah, there are lots there are lots um i recently i am part uh, or was part of a, a project in agusan and i was just i mean i didn't meet a lot of them but the stories are like my god there's everywhere you know and yes and Agusan in particular because there's the famous Surigao horde that in the 80s someone was was digging up a construction site or something and then they found all this old gold right yeah and yeah. then um uh they uh, people tried to protect the site but here come the I, I don't know they're they're not even technically treasure hunters they're um they're not exactly looters either. They're, you know, kibitzers. Yeah, yeah, like, just, they're schooled, so we'll get some. It, that's, it's amazing. I mean, not just the Surigao Horde. Um, when we were in Agusan, one of the sites there, there were like at least two stories of they found something, they called in friends, they came to dig, and they left in, in two jeeps of old pots, gold artifacts, and whatnot. And you know, that didn't even get out. That didn't even get out the national news. So it mm -hmm. happens all the time. Right? Um, Batangas, uh, Kalatagan Batangas has been, it's just a treasure trove. Mm -hmm. So a lot, lot, there are lots of treasure hunters there, definitely. But also, you know, the Ayalas own most of Kalatagan, mm -hmm. right? The Zobel. So my God, they're already rich and they, they're sitting on land that's rich with. Archeolo archaeological yeah to finds. say nothing of you know sunken galleons um, I'm sure there are um, sea-based treasure hunting activities oh yeah actually yes. more there yes um, and the the treasure hunters the sea-based the uh, maritime treasure hunters yeah. are are very well funded because yes, these and, are and they foreign... would need more complicated equipment yes. for that. and in fact they they actually um, collaborate with the National Museum mm -hmm. So it's like um, the Philippines recognizing, well, that, that's a sad part, recognizing that we don't have the equipment, we don't have the funding to do very expensive um, maritime archaeological work. 
we need to collaborate with these very well-funded foreign treasure hunters. Technically, yes. that's what they are. Um, and then, and then, because we have, I would say, good cultural properties laws, we don't, we don't uh, go home empty-handed. Mm -hmm. Definitely, because the National Museum is involved, the information that is acquired from these digs underwater are kept by the National Museum. Right. And then there's some 6040 deal there, and so. 6040. What 6040? Um, it, it, it's like. Um, I think if that's if that's how the rules or the policies go right now, um, the fund the funding the, the outside funder, usually a foreigner comes in, goes for these underwater wrecks, and so whatever material comes out of that, sixty percent goes to the national museum, including all unique and rare finds. Okay. And, and then forty percent goes, go, goes technically, to the, uh, technically officially goes to officially goes to the. Um, the foreign funder and, and then they can do as they please. Suppose you were to find something in your garden that looks really old. What you what should you do? I know that you shouldn't take it out and wash it. What what is the procedure for this? And why is it important that you leave it in the ground? The procedure there, um, if if I am correct with the IRR of the cultural properties uh, law. RA 166, if I'm not mistaken, is to inform the National Museum of the Philippines as okay. the so the National Museum as the um, caretaker of all cultural. I seen you just of the land. find out the name of the National Museum online and you call them and you say, oh, "Hello, I found something in my garden." They will direct you to the Cultural Properties Division, mm -hmm. uh, in which case they should find the person to go out and verify. Yeah. Okay. What I'm getting from this conversation so far is that archaeology requires tons and tons and tons of patience, oh, yeah. which obviously disqualifies me from the archaeological profession. But, and then apart from you know the tons of patience, you have to deal with bureaucracy, and then you have to deal with very stringent standards of proof. Basically. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, how do you manage to maintain your sanity given given everything that you have to deal with? As in, just establishing your reputation as an archaeologist must be hell. On a lighter note, how do we most archaeologists deal with that? Yeah, alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Um, but me personally, um, I'm not any more directly associated uh, or officially associated with the archaeological studies program. I do a lot of science advocacy work. Mm -hmm. So working, you know, um, and with Agham. Advocates yes. of Science and Technology for the People. So, um, I feel very alive working with the masses, mm -hmm. you know, and being able to use some of my archaeological um, background uh, and 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 help people with their struggles. So that keeps me sane. I mean, it's 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 a mad world, but you know, some people might think you. You're, you do know, you have like any um, side interests that are sort of connected to archaeology? Like, do you have a screenplay of? Um, are you writing a screenplay of archaeologists, uh, an archaeological expedition finding the lost cities of something under Navotas, Malabon, whatever? Actually, no, no, um, no. I, I, I have uh, like hobby horses in terms of research or, mm -hmm. or what I want to find out. Like, like for uh, instance, if you were to have a personal holy grail, like. If you had a dream expedition finding, what would it be? I can answer Holy Grail. It's just a continuous because everybody yeah. wants the Holy Grail. Yeah, you know, I mean, um, I'm not that type of person. I just like the struggle. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm the guy who likes the process. You know, the how we get there. So, uh, I guess it's really you know emancipation of the masses from. from yeah, and and I, I'm thinking that. Um, the significance of archaeology to the lives of um, your your average man on the street would be to prove that we have a past and to show the importance of this past because how the hell are we going to know who we are if we didn't know where we came from yeah uh, well yes definitely I mean if, if I can if, if I can share one of uh, my, my hobby horse you know, yeah uh, sort of like a holy grail for me in, in a sense um, I've been involved in, in, the, in a lot of excavations near the coast of Manila Bay. And um, I've realized that there's a lot of tambak, uh, reclamation, mm -hmm. you know, in the past. Right? 
and um, and so I've been working yeah, with other. Yeah, what's the problem with reclamation? What are what are the possible consequences? Well, well, well a lot. A lot. Um, recently, in the news, if you've seen that this truck just went through uh, one of the roads near mm-hmm. near it just, Ross. Shk. Yeah, and they were talking about sinkholes, and that's a reclaimed area. You know, um, of course, it took how many? It took almost a hundred years. Mm-hmm. Nineteen. The reclamation of, of Ross Boulevard began in 1904. Okay. Um, and so that's a that's one possibility. Um, direct impacts would be worsening floods inland because you don't anymore have outlets. Um, of course, the unthinking development, right? I mean, I'm just glad as an archaeologist that I have data that can contribute to what other scientists are talking about in terms of it's a bad idea to reclaim mm-hmm. right? or we can do things better if we just want you know i mean of course government wants to do this because build 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 more money right, right. but uh, it's not really serving it's only serving a select few i mean you build an aerotropolis in bulacan who who among those fisher folk can afford a, a flight to to the us right? mm. or who, who can afford a condo unit Right. If you're a fisher folk, right? So you're not, right? And they're and these people contribute you're to our food. Not serving the community. Yeah. yeah. So, well, yeah. I just had a brainwave during our discussion that um, if you want more funding for projects, you should sell politicians on the idea of destiny. It's like, oh, we're digging something in your um, in your constituency, and we're going to find this ancient thing that must be linked to your ancestors, thus proving that you can be governor for life or something oh oh my god it, it, uh, yeah. it, hitler was a major funder of archaeology the, yes the marcoses yes i mean i think um it think, goes together no oh, yeah. um strong men and <laughs> archaeology there, there is um in in archaeology we there is nationalist archaeology archaeology is used uh, towards very fascist ends yes you know china uses mm-hmm. archaeology to to put a stamp that yeah, you know, everything, archaeology you know. and concrete, two things yeah. that fascist regimes love. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm in the wrong business. <laughs> yeah, so um, when is the next time you're going to go on a dig or have you said goodbye to, to digging? Oh, no, um, I'm leaving for a fellowship, mm-hmm. uh, hopefully, if all papers go well. And so I'll be doing a lot of digging in mainland Southeast Asia. Mm-hmm. Um, this this time to contribute to world prehistory. Okay, yeah. and uh, uh, and before we end this, um, if people want to study archaeology or you know consider a career in archaeology, where should they go? What should they do? We we don't have an undergrad, so okay, <laughs> so, we don't have an undergrad in archaeology. So what college should Usually, they should they apply to? It's something like I'll tell people do geology or biology, you know, or physical geography. You know, but usually people will go into. Oh, it's kind of like journalism. I tell people, you know, go to sociology, yeah, psychology, yeah. or something. Or, but most people will come from anthropology or history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the stereotype. So. But so, um, first steps. What do they major in? Um, I guess the social sciences, history, something you truly love. To 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 develop into a very good archaeologist, um, take your liberal education seriously. Yeah. What what particular course doesn't matter. As long as you yeah okay so you already have your degree. degree and then yeah. what what should you do apply go to the archaeological studies program the, we have the nicest admin people it's connected to what the college of science social sciences no and... we are we are a an independent unit uh, that answers if I'm not mistaken directly to the office of the vice president for academic affairs uh, we are working towards becoming okay a just school. go to the the building next to fine arts yes yes okay. the Albert Hall for those yes. who are interested um, we have a website. Um, and you can find the contact details there. Or if you happen to be in the Diliman area, just go to the Albert Hall, which is right beside the College of Fine Arts, and um, look for the admin office. Lovely people. Yes, and um, suppose people want to volunteer during their vacations. Uh, How do they volunteer? Um, Yes, Katanawan. We have the Katanawan Archaeological Heritage Project which is uh, in Katanawan, Quezon. And every year, there's a call on social media and around the university for volunteers, mm-hmm. student volunteers. 
and you get a chance to dig with um, undergrads, uh, anthropology, archaeology undergrads from the Australian National University and the University of the Philippines. So I, I know that that's an actual pro, uh, ongoing program, mm -hmm. and it's uh, and a lot of its graduates, uh, of volunteer graduates, have moved on to doing master's degrees. So that's that's one project. Um, if you have so much time in your hand, you you know people in archaeology are, are very welcoming. So are, yes, and you also have those um, talks, right? Every Wednesday on a regular uh, on the regular academic calendar. Yeah. Between 11:30 to 1, we have what we call the Binalo talks, and it's not necessarily talks on archaeology. You know, archaeologists need talks to, on a range of subjects. Yeah, range of subjects, but definitely most of the people who. And will then you attend, can meet um, archaeologists, the yeah. the people you might end up working with. Definitely. You had a project where you were collecting old toothbrushes. We have several projects. Yes. Every now and then, uh, or continuously, we we accept donations of old toothbrushes because that's very useful in archaeological work. What do you do with them? As in, you, you clean the pots with we them? We clean the pots, we clean different artifacts with them. You okay. Know? And instead of like going out and buying toothbrushes, you know, old toothbrushes will Old toothbrushes are good because they're soft and Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, aside from that, you know, archaeologists, since we do a lot of uh, work with communities, um, some of our professors have done good work to, to build on heritage projects. So it's great. Um, we don't just dig and publish in scientific journals. Right. We are able to bring the archaeology directly to the community and right. find ways to connect it to their present culture. And so, at least in El Nido in Palawan, you can see that the community is very empowered. You know, yes. you don't just go and say, "Hey, you know, we're gonna grab your land." They're gonna say, "Hey, we've been around quite some time, and we know what our lands are all about and what we have here." So yeah, but that project, my God, more than 15 years. Yes, very cool. Yeah, and yeah. you know, when I'm rich, I'm going to donate money. Um, no, I'm going to set up a fund for an archaeological excavation so you can find me some infinity stones and I can snap my fingers and the people I hate will disappear. I'm, I'm really <laughs> Hopefully I'm not one of them. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay.